Hello and welcome to Economics A-Level on YouTube. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to what macroeconomics is all about. So the logical starting point is what the word macroeconomics means. And literally, it means large household management. So the word macro in Greek means large. The word economics in Greek means household management. So if you think back to macroeconomics, we were looking at the distribution of scarce resources. In macroeconomics, we're doing the same, but on a larger scale. And by larger scale, we mean a national economic scale. So we mean the total economy, which we break down into all of the transactions, i.e. all of spending and buying and selling, all production and all income. So macroeconomics then is concerned with the absolute total of what goes on in the economy over a certain period of time. So it's distinct from microeconomics in that sense. And just to clarify this, in microeconomics, we are concerned with, for example, the market for a certain good over a certain period of time. So for example, we look at the total demand and supply for apples maybe in the UK, or we look at the demand and supply for apples in Manchester at a certain period of time. That's what microeconomics is about. But in macroeconomics, we look at the demand and the supply for apples combined with the demand and supply for pears, combined with the demand and supply for iPhones and coconut oil, deodorants and everything that you can have an economic transaction linked to in the economy over a given period of time. So rather than using simple demand and supply analysis that's used in microeconomics, in macroeconomics we use aggregate demand analysis and aggregate supply analysis. So that's what AD stands for on that graph and that's what AS stands for on that graph. So aggregate just means that we totaled all of the demand and all of the supply together to give us a picture of the whole demand and supply in the national economy over a given period of time. So there are a lot of words in macroeconomics that you may already have some idea and some familiarity with, for example, growth, unemployment, budget deficit tax, exports and imports, inflation, deflation, those sorts of terms. Now, a lot of these can be shown on this aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph that we looked at in the previous section of this video. So, for example, if we take growth, you'll see that the x-axis along the bottom there is titled RO forward slash GDP. And so GDP is growth. RO means real output, which means the total amount of production in the economy. So that's how we measure growth. We measure growth along that x-axis all the way up until where it says FE, which is full employment, which if you think back to the PPF video from the micro part of this series, shows the maximum possible production at a given point in time. That bottom axis as well also shows us the concept of unemployment and full employment. We've already said that FE is full employment of resources. So therefore, anything to the left of that along the x-axis up to zero is unemployment and we can show that on a macro graph as well so for example if we take r01 which is where ad the initial ad curve hits the lras curve that gap between r01 and full employment is that degree of unemployment there's obviously a smaller unemployment gap between ad1 and full employment which i've not marked on this graph but you can see that that gap between where that would hit the x-axis and full employment is going to be a lot smaller so that shows differing degrees of unemployment we can also show in full on this ADAS graph as well, because that's what the price level PL axis, the Y axis shows over there as well. So price level means inflation. So we can show inflation, unemployment and growth on here. But of course, exports, tax and budget deficit all affect how aggregate demand moves, whether it moves left or right. It also affects the position of the LRAS curve because that could move to the right as well. So therefore, all these concepts can all be shown diagrammatically or graphically through ADAS analysis. You may also be familiar with some other macroeconomic Economic concepts that you come across in the news. So for example, this week when I recorded this video, we see that the International Trade Secretary is talking about EU issues post-Brexit. So this is a very large macroeconomic issue for the UK at the moment. And then we can see there's another example that I've just picked out from the BBC's website that the wealth of people in the 30s has halved in a decade compared to those who are now in their 40s. So all of these are macroeconomic issues and they all have impacts on the macroeconomy. So that's what we're going to be studying when we study macroeconomics. So now we need to consider something that I call the map of macroeconomics. And as you can see from the arrows, there is a flow involved with macroeconomics as a whole. This map of macro should serve as a handy revision guide and a handy map to show you all of the concepts that you need to know and all of the interlinkages that you need to know in macroeconomics, plus a few more. In the first box on the far left, we've got the government's policy objectives. So these are the objectives the government sets out for what it wants to achieve in the macroeconomy. These 
these then influence what the government's macroeconomic policies are, so how the government thinks it can achieve those objectives by changing various policies that, that it has control over. And then these policies are transmitted through the economy and then these affect the policy objectives. So you can follow the arrows and you can see how each links to each one. When we get back to having achieved the policy objectives, then the government needs to change its macroeconomic policies and then this gets transmitted through the economy again, affects the objectives and so on. So you can see it's a big flow. So in terms of the government's policy objectives, there are four main ones. Sustained and sustainable economic growth, that will be the subject of the next video. Low unemployment, low and stable inflation, so the target for that is 2% with a tolerance limit of plus or minus 1% and then a balance of payments balance. So the value of exports roughly equaling the value of imports. There's then three subsidiary objectives, reduction of the budget deficit. So this was very much talked about from 2010 to 2016 when David Cameron and George Osborne were in charge of the government. Seems to have fallen slightly off the radar now Philip Hammond's chance of the Exchequer, but could still be a priority for Theresa May's government. Not completely certain about that yet. They're talking about it less for sure. Reduction of income inequality and environmental protection and then other, other two subsidiary objectives. We'll look at each of those in turn in separate videos. So the government's policies then that the government manipulates to achieve policy objectives are split into demand side and supply side policies. So the demand side policies are fiscal policy, which involves the altering of government spending and government tax levels. So that's what GNT stand for. The second policy is monetary policy, which is the control of interest rates. So the government sets an inflation target of 2% and then it gives control of interest rates to the Bank of England who then tries to meet the government's macroeconomic objective of 2% inflation per year. There's also exchange rate policy, which is in italics, because there isn't necessarily a direct government policy to control the exchange rate, because we are a freely floating exchange rate determined by market forces. But monetary policy has exchange rate impact. So that's why we need to learn about that when we're learning about macroeconomics. And then there are lots and lots and lots of supply side policies, far too many to mention and name here. But we'll look at those and they also link back to factors that cause growth growth in the PPF, which we did in the micro section of this course. So then these policies are transmitted through the economy through aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So aggregate demand is made up of consumption spending by households, me and you, investment spending by businesses, government spending and net exports, which is the difference between the value of exports minus the value of imports. Aggregate supply, we're going to look at two forms, short run and long run. So short run is changes in cost of production, how that affects firm supply in the short run, and then long run aggregate supply. There's two versions of that, classical or Keynesian, which represents the long-term productive potential or long-term trend rate of growth of the economy. So you can see then that when the government changes its macro policies, it gets transmitted through the economy through aggregate demand and supply. This meets the objectives, which then will change the policies again and you know the effects get transmitted through and so on. So that's why I call it the map of macro. In the next video, we're going to look at the basics of economic growth. If you want to go to that, click on the link in the video now. If not, please click on the link below to subscribe and I'll see you next time.